In this video, we're going to talk about how to plot the DC load line for a circuit in base bias configuration, and also how to determine the Q point values of IC and VCE. So RC is 3K, the base resistance is 500 kilo ohms. This is the base of the NPN transistor, that's the collector, and this is the emitter. So the first thing we need to do is calculate the maximum saturation current. By the way, the DC load line is a line that shows the values of IC and VCE. So you have VCE on the x-axis, IC on the y-axis. IC is the current flowing to the collector of the transistor. IE is the current flowing from the emitter of the transistor. IB is the base current. VCE that is the voltage across the collector and the emitter of the transistor. It's VC minus VE. So the first thing you want to do is calculate the maximum saturation current. For this particular circuit, it is the collector supply voltage divided by RC. The collector supply voltage is 12. RC is 3 kilo ohms. 12 volts divided by 3 kilo ohms is equal to 4 milliamps. So that's the first thing that you want to plot on the DC load line is the maximum collector current. Now the next thing that we need to do is calculate or determine our maximum VCE value. The maximum VCE value is the collector supply voltage. VCE cannot exceed 12 volts. So that's going to be our x-intercept. Our y-intercept is our saturation collector current. Now once we have these two points, all we need to do is simply connect them with a straight line. And that wasn't really a straight line. Let's do that again. And so that's how we can create the DC load line. The Q point is any point on that line. Ideally, we want a centered Q point value because at that point we can get the greatest, we can create an amplifier that works the best, so to speak. So this is the ideal Q point is when VCE is half of VCC. So that's going to be six volts. And that's when the collector current is half of the maximum saturation collector current. So that's going to be 2 milliamps. So these are the center point Q values. That is when VCE is equal to 6 and IC is equal to 2 milliamps. Now the circuit that we have may not be a midpoint bias circuit like what we have here with these values. So we need to calculate the actual IC and VCE values for this particular circuit. In an ideal situation, we want VCE to be half of VCC and IC to be half of the maximum saturation current. But that's an ideal situation. We don't necessarily have that in this example. Now, before we finish this problem, I want to mention a few things. This point here, the y-intercept, that is the saturation region. So that's when IC is at its maximum value. And that occurs when VCE is equal to zero. On the Y axis, X is equal to zero. Now this point here, this is known as the cutoff region. At the cutoff region, VCE is equal to VCC. In addition to that, IC is at its minimum value, it's zero. Because on the x-axis, the y-value is always 0. So IC is 0. So make sure you understand that. Under saturation, VCE is equal to 0. And IC is at its maximum value. At the cutoff region, IC is equal to 0. But VCE is at its maximum value. That is, it's equal to the collector supply voltage. Now, in between these two regions is the active region of the transistor. That's where you want the transistor to be. 
ideally right in the middle between the saturation region and the cutoff region. So you want a Q point that is centered, where VCE is half of VCC and IC is half of its maximum value. Now in the cutoff region, the transistor is off. This is when VBE is less than 0.6 volts. So that region is not very helpful. In the saturation region, it doesn't work as an amplifier anymore. It's going to introduce distortion. At that point, IC no longer equals beta times IB. If you increase IB, IC doesn't go up under saturation. Now in the active region, IC is proportional to IB according to this equation. So when IB doubles in value, IC will double proportionally. And so in the active region, the transistor, let me say that again, the transistor functions very well as an amplifier. But if you could centered, if you can bias the transistor at this midpoint, the amplifier will work at its best. So that's enough with the, the theory part of this circuit. Let's focus on solving uh, this example problem. So the first thing we need to do is calculate the base current IB. To do that, we need to calculate the current flowing through RB. So it's going to be the voltage across RB, which is the collector supply voltage of 12 volts minus VBE. Or you could say just VB for this particular example, divided by RB. So VCC is 12. VBE at its minimum is 0.6 volts, which is the same for a silicon diode. The voltage drop of a silicon diode will vary between 0.6 and 0.7. But for this example, we're going to use 0.6. And then RB is 500 kilo ohms. So this is going to be 11.4 divided by 500K. Whenever you divide volts by kilo ohms, you're going to get the current in milliamps. So IB is going to be 0 0.0228 milliamps. So now that we have IB, we can now calculate IC. By the way, one thing I forgot to give you is the beta of this transistor. Let's assume that the beta value is we're going to say 200. Actually, let's say, let's change that. Let's make that 150. If you want to pause the video and solve the rest of the problem, feel free to do so. IC is going to be beta times IB. So beta is 150. IB is 0 0.0228 milliamps. So the collector current is going to be 3.42 milliamps. So now that we have the collector current, we can now calculate VCE. VCE is going to be the collector supply voltage minus the voltage drop of across RC, which is IC times RC. So it's going to be 12 volts minus IC, which is 3.42 milliamps times RC, which is 3 kilo ohms. Milliamps times kilo ohms will give you volts. So 12 minus 3.42 times 3 gives us a VCE value of 1.74. So this is between 0 and 12, which means that this particular transistor is in the active region. However, it is not centered on the DC load line. So anytime IC is between 0 and its maximum value, in this case 4 milliamps for the circuit, or VCE is between 0 and its maximum value, which is 12, then the transistor is in the active region. Just to give you where the numbers lie. 
So as you can see, IC is close to 4. So it's close to the saturation region. And VCE is close to 0, which occurs when the transistor is in a saturation region. So this transistor is far away from the cutoff region, but closer to the saturation region. Now let's work on this problem. We want to design a transistor base bias circuit that has centered Q point values for IC and VCE, given a collector supply voltage of 9 volts. This time, I'm not going to forget to give you the beta value. Let's say that the beta value or the HFE value of the transistor is 200. So what you want to do is you want to determine the values of RB and RC that will give you centered Q point values for IC and VCE. Feel free to pause the video if you want to try it. So the first thing we want to do is determine RC. That's step one. Recall that VCE is equal to VCC minus IC times RC. So if we rearrange this equation to solve for RC, RC is going to be VCC minus VCE over IC. Now, our collector supply voltage is 9 volts, which means the centered Q point value for VCE is going to be half of that. So the potential between the collector and the emitter is going to be half of 9 volts if we want it to be centered properly. So the potential at C is going to be 4.5 volts with respect to ground. So that's our VCE value. Now the next thing that we want to do is we want to choose a value for IC. It doesn't matter what value that we choose. Once we plug it into this equation, it's automatically going to be a centered Q point value for IC. Now we don't want IC to be too high because it can burn the transistor. So we're going to set it to a reasonable value of 20 milliamps. Now let's calculate RC. So it's going to be VCC minus VCE, which we set that to 4.5 divided by 20 milliamps. So 4.5 volts divided by 20 milliamps will give us a resistance of 0.225 kilo ohms which is 225 ohms. Now, it's not very common to find a 225 ohm resistor. So what you could do is get a 220 ohm resistor, which is common, and add that with a 5.1 ohm resistor. And the total resistance will be approximately 225. Now, if we were to draw the DC load line, the y-intercept will be VCC divided by RC. So that's going to be 9 divided by 0.225, which is 40. So 40 milliamps is the maximum saturation current. And the maximum VCE value is 9 volts. So this is going to be the DC low line. So our centered Q point it's going to have a voltage of 4.5 and a current of 20 milliamps, which is what we now have in a circuit. IC is set to 20 and VCE is set to 4.5. Now the only thing we need to do is determine what RB should be. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm just going to write the value for RC here. So that's 225 ohms. And IC is 20 milliamps. The next thing we need to do is calculate IB before we can calculate RB. Now we know that IC is equal to beta times IB. So the base current is going to be IC divided by beta. So that's 20 milliamps divided by a beta or an HFE, let me say that again, an HFE value of 200. 
So 20 milliamps divided by 200 will give us a base current of 0.1 milliamps. So now that we know what the base current is, we can now calculate RB. So the formula that we're going to use is this one. It comes from this formula. IB is equal to VCC minus VBE. So that's the voltage across RB divided by RB. But to get RB, if we rearrange the equation, it's going to be the collector supply voltage minus the voltage drop across the base and the emitter region. And then divided by IB. So VCC is 9. VBE, it's 0.6. That's the minimum voltage to activate the transistor. And then IB, that's 0.1 milliamps. So this is going to be 8.4 divided by 0.1. And that's going to be 84 kilo ohms. So that is the value of RB that will give us the desired current, 0.1 milliamps. And with a beta of 200, we'll get a collector current of 20 milliamps, which will set VCE to 4.5 volts, half of 9 volts. So that's how you could design a transistor based bias circuit with centered Q point values for IC and VCE. So step one is to set VCE to half of nine volts. Step two is to determine what IC value that you want to use for this transistor and then calculate the appropriate RC value. Once you have RC, calculate IB using this equation. And then once you have IB, you can calculate RB using this equation. And so that's it for this video. So now you know how to draw the DC load line. You know how to determine the centered Q point values. And you also know how to design a transistor based bias circuit with this condition. Thanks for watching.